السلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته جميعا حياكم الله اليوم في دورتنا حتكون معنا الدكتوره نجوى جعفر استشاريه امراض نساء ولاده في مجمع الملك فيصل الطبي بمستشفى النساء والولاده بالمجمع فحياكم الله جميعا دكتوره نجوى دكتورة نجوى معنا؟ ايوه نعم معك استاذ طاري تفضلي دكتورة اعملي شير سكرين وابدا الكورس السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته مساءكم خير جميعا اشكر مديرية الشؤون الصحية وأشكر إدارة الشؤون الأكاديمية والتدريب أشكر رئيس القسم بقسم النساء والولادة بالمجمع وأشكر جميع على إتاحة هذه الفرصة لمناقشة ارتفاع حالات ارتفاع ضغط الدم مع الحمل نبدأ بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم We'll talk today about hypertensive disorders with pregnancy See what I said disorders because it is not one order or disorder it is hypertensive spectrum. Okay, we'll talk about it in details. Why this one not moving? Okay. Okay, okay this uh, hypertensive spectrum account for two to eight percent. It consists of gestational hypertension, chronic hypertension, either it is primary or secondary, and superimposed preeclampsia. Preeclampsia, either it is without severe feature or with severe features, eclampsia and HELP syndrome. Unfortunately, hypertensive disorder with pregnancy account for 16% of maternal death in developed countries, and it increases in developing countries. It is one of the leading cause of maternal death. This is the report of mother and babies reducing risk through audit and confidential inquiry into in, across the UK. It is one of the institutes which is responsible to look for the why mothers die, why mothers die, and how to save mother's life. And every trillium, it will uh, produce one report to see what is the major causes of maternal death and what is the leading cause of maternal death. Since 2003, hypertensive disorder is a leading cause of maternal death and increase also perinatal morbidity. This report, if you can see from 2009 to 2013, see how is the preeclampsia is considered as one of the leading cause of maternal death in spite of interventions that uh, accounted to, the, to uh, the effort to decrease the maternal death. This is 2019 report. See, it's still preeclampsia. It is in the bottom, it is 2%, but it's still it is one of the leading cause of the maternal death. In that, it causes heart disease also. Uh, eclampsia is one of the causes of indirect maternal death through cardiac disease. We'll see later on in our talk how it will cause cardiac uh, problems. This is this. Uh, slide top 10 recommendation from 2003 to 2005 report from confidential inquiry. C, it recommend treat systolic hypertension. Same in 2006 to 2008, treat systolic hypertension. Why they said like that? Because the reason for maternal death from hypertensive disorder is cerebral hemorrhage. The main cause for maternal death is cerebral hemorrhage. And not the diastolic hypertension is the reason for the death, it is systolic hypertension. So the aim to reduce the systolic hypertension. So to save the life, we need today to go through the definition of the disease, understanding the pathophysiology, how to screen, how to prevent, how to diagnose, and how to manage it. This is what we, inshallah, will talk today about it in our uh, lecture, inshallah. To diagnose hypertensive disorder, we need two things, blood pressure and to check protein in urine. Blood pressure, to consider patient as hypertensive, systolic blood pressure to be 140 or more, or diastolic pressure to be 90 or more in two occasions, four hours apart, 
this hypertension to occur uh, to be uh, discovered uh, after 20 weeks of gestation in a previously normal blood pressure patient or uh, to find systolic blood pressure 160 or more, diastolic 110 or more. This is considered a severe hypertension and just not to wait four hours to repeat uh, blood pressure checking. Only minutes is enough, maximum 15 minutes to repeat and to confirm the diagnosis. <clears throat> In measuring blood pressure, there is some errors we have to avoid to uh, uh, wrongly diagnose patient as hypertensive. Always use accurate equipment either electronic or uh, uh, mercury, anyhow, whatever it is should be accurate equipment. Use sitting or steamy sitting position so that the arm to be used at the level of the heart because to, av uh, to avoid uh, or to cable compression if the patient is lying flat. So steamy sitting position is the appropriate position. Use an appropriate cuff. You cannot use a small cuff for obese patient or use a big cuff for slim patient. So uh, appropriate cuff is necessarily use cross cuff five. It is the disappearance of heart sound for the measuring of the diastolic pressure, not the muffling that is cross cuff four. So uh, to actually accurately measure the diastolic blood pressure, we need to measure the cross cuff five. Proteinuria, we have three ways to measure the proteinuria, either by dip stick, should be plus two or more, or 24 hour urine, urine protein, 300 milligram or more, or protein creatinine ratio that is 0.3 milligram per deciliter. Risk factors for developing hypertensive disorder, see the list in front of you, like nulliparity, multifetal gestation, because increased size of the placenta, history of preeclampsia in a previous pregnancy. This is very important to select the risk factor for next pregnancy because the relative risk of developing preeclampsia or hypertensive disorder in the next pregnancy is higher with previous history of preeclampsia. Having a chronic hypertension or diabetes, uh, thrombophilia, systemic lupus, obesity, antifossil age more than 40, renal disease, and assisted uh, blood technology, all these are risk factors for developing hypertensive disorder. But which one is more serious? The, the one who is more serious is the previous history of preeclampsia. I see that the relative risk is 7.1 in comparison to other reasons. Also, the woman suffering from medical conditions such as antiphospheric syndrome, the relative risk is 9.7. So when you are checking in the antenatal list, you have to check for the risk factor. What is the etiology of developing hypertensive disorders in pregnancy. The etiology is failure of invasion of spiral arteries by the, by the trophoblast. See here in the left side of this picture, how is the normal pregnancy, how they invade the muscularis layers of the spiral arteries the, uh, and well placenta is well perfused. So the fetus also be well perfused. In the other hand, in the right side of the screen, you can see the pathological pregnancy in preeclampsia or fetal growth restriction, how the trophoblast failed to invade the uh, muscularis layer of the spiral arteries. So this hypoperfusion of the placenta and this, uh, uh, this uh, uh, etiology is considered to be a risk factor for developing hypertensive disorder and fetal growth restriction. Hypertensive disorder is multi-system disease. It is not a disease of only increasing high blood pressure. It will affect everything in the, in the body. Starting by increasing the blood pressure, affecting cardiovascular system through increasing the peripheral resistance and increasing vascular permeability, affecting the platelets by, by decreasing the number of the blood and increasing aggregation, decreasing number and increase platelet ag aggregation. Affecting the liver because of the hemorrhages, necrosis, increasing, leading to increased liver enzymes and leading to health syndrome, leading to really to hepatic infarction and rupture. Affecting the kidney by increased sensitivity to angiotensin uh, two. Re renal affection will be in two stages. First is decrease, uh, 
tubular function, so it will reduce uric acid clearance. The second step is to decrease glomerular filtration, which lead to proteinuria. This is known as glomerular endotheliosis. Renal affection is known as glomerular endotheliosis. What about cerebral affection? Vasoconstriction and ischemia lead to abnormal electrical activity leading to seizures. Okay, an increase vascular variability leading to brain edema. Okay. So what is the effect of, effect of eclam or of a hypertensive disorder on the fetus? The same pathophysiology that abnormality in the placental bed and subsequent failure of physiological transformation of spiral arteries in the first or early second trimester limit the blood flow to the utero-placental unit which lead to fetal growth restriction, oligohydramnus, abruption, non-reassuring fetal monitoring, and preterm deliveries. In this slide, you will show how hypertensive disorders will affect the cardiovascular system. And now the cardiovascular problems is the leading cause of, indire leading cause of indirect maternal death. Now we'll go to define and classify those hypertensive spectrum. First of all, what is gestational hypertension? Gestational hypertension is the hypertension without proteinuria or without severe feature developed after 20 weeks of gestation. And the blood pressure will return to normal level post in postpartum period. Up to 50% of those women will progress to preeclampsia, most likely when the hypertensive, when the hypertension diagnosed before 32 weeks of gestation. Preeclampsia, that is hypertension associated with New onset of hypertension, which occur most often after 20 weeks of gestation and frequently near term, although often accompanied by new onset proteinuria, it can occur in the absence of proteinuria. So the presence of proteinuria is not necessarily to diagnose preeclampsia. How to diagnose preeclampsia? As we said, hypertension with proteinuria, or in the absence of proteinuria, the finding of the following: thrombocytopenia when the platelet count is less than 100,000, or renal insufficiency, serum creatinine more than 1.1, or the doubling a serum creatinine concentration, impaired liver function, doubling of the liver enzymes, transaminases, pulmonary edema, or new onset headache, which is unresponsive to any medication and not accounted by any alternative diagnosis or visual symptoms. If mild headache, that is, can be for any other reasons, but if new onset and unresponsive to medication, you have to consider preeclampsia. What is the severe feature that, because we said there is preeclampsia without severe feature and preeclampsia with severe feature. So what is the severe feature? First of all, when the systolic blood pressure is 160 or more or the diastolic above 110. Thrombocytopenia, impaired liver function, renal, fun renal insufficiency, pulmonary edema, new onset headache responsible to medication and visual disturbance. This is a severe feature. So if you found any of this, you will diagnose preeclampsia with severe feature, which need a specific, uh, in, in, in specific consideration. Symptoms of symptoms and signs of preeclampsia, hypertension. Weight gain, proteinuria, uh, generalized edema, especially facial edema, and this can progress to eclampsia. What is eclampsia? Eclampsia is the convulsive manifestation of hypertensive disorder. It can be tonic clonic convulsions, or focal or multifocal seizures, or uh, in the absence of any other causative condition. Any convulsion during pregnancy, especially after 20 weeks of gestation, to be considered as eclampsia till prove otherwise. Eclampsia is a significant cause of maternal death. Seizures may lead to severe maternal hypoxia, trauma, aspiration, pneumonia, impaired memory and cognitive function, permanent white matter loss, and 38% occur in normal tensive non patients. 38% can be in normal tensive patients. Eclampsia, it accounts for 35, uh, or occurring in 35% of antenatal patients. 
18% in intrapartum vision and 44% in postnatal vision. What is the pathophysiology of the preeclampsia if the cause of the hypertensive disorder is the baby and the placenta? So why more, more than 40% occur in postpartum period? This is because there is a strict management of antenatal hypertension. Everyone is taking care of effect, uh, pre preventing occurrence of eclampsia in antenatal period, taking care of the patients in interopartum uh, period, uh, close monitoring, uh, um, uh, strong management. But if, after the patient will deliver, they are thinking the risk is less. So this leads to more, more occurrence of uh, eclampsia in postnatal period. So we have to consider this one. And ag aggressive management of hypertension and antenatal period lead also to decrease clumsy in antenatal period. But in the other hand, postnatal eclampsia is more. Health syndrome, it's one of more uh, one of the more severe form of eclampsia because it has been associated with increased rates of maternal morbidity and mortality. Help account H for hypertension. E for elevated, L for liver enzyme, L for low, and the P for platelets. So health syndrome is hypertension with elevated liver enzyme and low platelets. Associated also with uh, elevated lactate dehydrogenase to above 600 international units per liter, doubling of the liver enzyme and low platelets. Health syndrome mostly occur in the third trimester, and 15% can develop eclampsia. 30% first ex express or progress postpartum, um, presenting by right upper quadrant pain, generalized malaise or nausea with vomiting in 50% of cases. Chronic hypertension defined as hypertension diagnosed or presence before pregnancy or before 20 weeks of gestation or hypertension that is diagnosed for the first time during pregnancy and that doesn't resolve in the typical postpartum period. In comparison to the preeclampsia, that should resolve after postpartum period, but in chronic hypertension, it will not resolve or occurring at very early gestation, account for 0.9 to 1.5%. Chronic hypertension can be essential in 89% of cases or secondary to either renal causes, endocrine causes, drugs induced, or vascular condition in 11 to 14%. And up to 20 to 50% may develop superimposed preeclampsia. The importance of this slide that as a obstetrician, we should not forget the secondary causes of, of uh, hy chronic hypertension. It is not all of them due to atherosclerosis. We have to look for other causes like few chromocytoma, Cushing disease, renal disease, and extra. Now we'll go to the second uh, issue in our lecture that how to screen for hypertensive disorder to prevent the morbidity and mortality. Unfortunately, no single test reliably predicts preeclampsia and further prospective investigation is required to demonstrate clinical utility. <clears throat> Studies are going on to see if there is any uh, screening method can we uh, can be adopted like angio angiogenic factors, this placenter growth factors, or uterine artery doubler, as you can see in, the, in this picture, the notching of the uterine artery doubler, or metabol metabolomics, metabolomics that uh, to study the metabolites that is present in the patients who have preeclampsia to, to study the specific metabolites in their body that uh, lead to preeclampsia. But still all of them still under research and nothing to, uh, to do with the screening method now. Prevention. Is there any uh, intervention can prevent occurrence of preeclampsia? A lot of studies done, a lot of research is done to investigate low-dose aspirin, anticoagulant, antioxidants like vitamin E and calcium supplement in prevention of preeclampsia. For anticoagulant and antioxidant, it is uh, ineffective in prevention of preeclampsia. 
for calcium. Calcium supplement in those who have, who have low calcium intake can help to prevent, but it's still statistically not significant. But regarding low dose aspirin, there is of promising, there is a lot of promising researches that have been done and recommend the low dose aspirin for the prevention of preeclampsia. In recent meta analysis of aggregate data, they uh, found that there is only a modest reduction in preeclampsia was noted in, with low dose aspirin if it started after 16 weeks of gestation, but more significant reduction in severe preeclampsia and fetal growth restriction was demonstrated with low dose aspirin was started before 16 weeks of pregnancy. That's why now all uh, huge bodies in the obstetric, like uh, American College of Obstetric, Royal College of Obstetric and Gynecology, they recommend now low dose aspirin to be started between 18 and 28 weeks, uh, more preferably at 12 weeks, at 12 weeks of gestation, and to be continued till delivery. So the recommendation is to start low dose aspirin from 12 weeks of gestation till delivery to prevent preeclampsia. Those aspirin not to be given to all people, to all pregnant women, to be given only for those who have risk factors for developing hypertensive disorders. This is slide from American College of Obstetric Gynecology showing who uh, those high risk, moderate risk who need aspirin or those aspirin during their antenatal care. First of all, the high risk is, uh, first of all, high history of preeclampsia in the previous pregnancy, especially if accompanied by an adverse outcome, multifetal gestation, chronic hypertension, diabetes, type one or two, renal disease, autoimmune disease. For those patients, you have, if you have one, if you have one risk factor, you have to start for them low dose aspirin. If you have two or more from the moderate risk like nullibarity, obesity, family history of preeclampsia, age 35 or more, personal history factor of low birth weight or small for gestation age to recommend low dose aspirin. And those who have previously uncomplicated full term delivery, no, no, don't recommend low dose aspirin. So if you look for this slide, you will find that most of our patients coming to antenatal care in the OBD, they might need, they might need low dose aspirin for prevention of preeclampsia. Management. Management will depend on the situation of the patient. If the patient is still antenatally, if she is stable, blood pressure uh, controlled or no, but as a baseline investigation, we have to check for serum electrolyte, for liver function, for full blood count, for clotting uh, time group, and so this is a basic investigation. Monitoring, we have to monitor the blood pressure. If she, the patient came in severe condition or acute con, uh, condition, the blood pressure should be monitored at least if every 15 minutes still stabilized. After stabilization, then every 30 minutes. Urine output, oxygen saturation, fluid balance to avoid risk of pulmonary edema, respiratory rate to be measured hourly, temperature for hourly, CVB if needed. And don't forget our fetus, fetal well being. Yani this is maternal and fetal monitoring. We, have, we don't forget, uh, should not forget the fetal monitoring by CTG, growth scans, and Doppler. Antihypertensive in the management, we will go now for antihypertensive medications. Our aim is to keep the blood pressure less than 160 over 105 and to keep the, to keep the mean arterial pressure at less than 125 millimeter mercury. This slide will show you the antihypertensive medications that we can use during pregnancy. Labetalol is our first choice of, of treatment. Starting by 200 milligram to 2,400, the maximum dose is 2,400, either in uh, twice daily dose or eight hour dose, two to three divided doses. 
uh, to keep in mind to avoid this labetrol with those who are asthmatic and having cardiac disease. Nifedipine with a, a long acting or short acting, starting by 20 to 30 milligram to, one to 120 milligram per day. Side effect can cause some uh, tachycardia, maternal tachycardia. Sublingual, uh, sublingual route is not recommended. Methyl dopa, although it is a weak drug, it still can be used during pregnancy, starting from 500 milligram to 3,000 milligram per day, divided in two to four doses. <clears throat> if there is acute hypertension or emergency hypertension, first of all, to, st to start to stabilize the patient after taking, I, uh, actually simultaneously, not after, simultaneously to take the investigations, to monitor the patient, start, uh, the antihypertensive medication is starting anticonvulsion medication and to start fluid therapy. So if you, you want to use antihypertensive in acute condition, first of all, you start labetalol, 200 milligram oral dose, and to check the blood pressure after 30 minutes. If there is no response, you can repeat the second dose. If no response, you will go for parenteral labetalol. Actually, why to start by, by oral dose? Because to give time for the staff to uh, insert the IV cannula, prepare the medication and everything. So don't wait for that time. So start putting 200 milligram labetalol to the, uh, give 200 milligram labetalol to the patient then to continue. This slide will show you one of the regimen used for in urgent blood pressure for control. Labetalol, as I told you, this is the first choice of management. You will start by 10 to 20 milligram start, followed by 20 to 80 milligram every 10 to 30 minutes. The, the benefit from IV labetalol that you can repeat it every 10 minutes, not, not to wait for half an hour or more than half an hour. The maximum dose is 300 milligram. There is another protocol also to use 50 milligram uh, labetalol, I will show you later. But now this is from ECOG, this uh, protocol that you can use 10 to 20 milligram IV followed by 20 to 80, every 10 minutes you can repeat. Hydralazine, five milligram IV or IM, then five to 10 milligram IV every 20 to 40 minutes. So repetition of hydralazine is 20 to 40 minutes. If you want to use nifedipine for the urgent blood control, so you, can, you have to use short acting short acting knife between 10 to 20 milligram already repeated in 20 minutes. The maximum dose is 180 milligram. This slide will show you the other protocol also for the antihypertensive labetalol. You will see, you will give bullous dose 50 milligram over 10 minutes. Then if no response, you will give another 50 milligram every five minutes, repeating the maximum dose will be to, to 200 milligram in total. Every five minutes you will repeat 50, 50, 50, the maximum is 200. And the maintenance dose then after that, it will be five milligram per mil, uh, and titrant doubling every 30 minutes. For hydralazine, 2.5 milligram over five minutes, then the maintenance dose 2.5 ml per hour. Uh, magnesium sulfate, we'll talk about it later, but anyhow, uh, the bullous dose is four gram over 20 minutes and the maintenance is one gram per hour for 24 hour uh, after delivery. Anticonvulsant magnesium sulfate is the only drug of choice. No other agent are appropriate. The evidence regarding the benefit the risk ratio of magnesium sulfate prophylaxis is less supportive for routine use in preeclampsia without severe feature. What is the meaning of this? <clears throat> magnesium sulfate infusion is not a routine in every case of preeclampsia. It is not a routine. Mild, moderate, severe, whatever you are classifying, you should not give magnesium for every patient. It is only, it is only for preeclampsia with severe feature. Preeclampsia with severe feature. 
the evidence is not supporting using the magnesium for preeclampsia without severe feature. As I show you before, the regimen of uh, magnesium sulfate, four gram, four to six loading dose over 20 to 30 minutes, followed by maintenance, one to two gram per hour, four to 24 hour. You can use also intramuscular route if you don't have intravenous access ready to, to give the magnesium sulfate. Follow up, formal clinical review should occur every four hours for those patients who are taking magnesium sulfate to check the pulse oximetry, our urine output, because this magnesium is exclusively excreted by the kidney. So urine output, you should uh, monitor to check for the toxicity. Our respiratory rate, checking the reflexes, cessation or reduction of magnesium sulfate therapy is there is absent biceps reflex absent biceps reflex. The adverse effect of magnesium sulfate, motor paralysis, absent reflexes, respiratory depression, cardiac arrhythmia. If you found any signs of magnesium toxicity, you can give uh, the antidote, which is 10 ml of 10% uh, calcium gluconate, slowly intravenous. 97% of magnesium sulfate secreted in the urine. So be alert about oliguria. This is the level of magnesium sulfate which can cause concern and toxicity. The therapeutic range, however, it is higher than the normal range. It is five to 10 milligram per deciliter. But you have to be careful if the magnesium level is above, uh, is reaching nine and above, so here are the signs of toxicity with a beer and uh, if more than 30 cardiac arrest will occur. Fluid management. We have to restrict fluid uh, uh, with the patients with preeclampsia to avoid pulmonary edema. The causes of death from preeclampsia is related to cerebral hemorrhage and related to pulmonary edema. So the total input should be limited to 80 ml per hour, approximately one ml per kg per hour. So if the patient is uh, slim, 80 ml will be so uh, too much dose for high, you have to decrease it more according to the patient weight. If you are uh, willing to give oxytocin, so give high concentration of oxytocin with low volume of the blood. Oliguria should not be, uh, precipitated any specific intervention except to encourage early delivery. Uh, oliguria should not be managed by fluid, uh, 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 what I will tell you, yani oliguria, if you have oliguria, don't give Lasix. Don't give Lasix and don't give fluid to improve the oliguria. If you have oliguria, don't do anything, expedite the delivery. Only this is the treatment. Delivery, when and how to deliver. Delivery should be well planned on the best day, not premature, not in the, as, as both date, in the best place, in well-equipped hospital with neurological service by the best route, either vaginal or cesarean. Caesarean section is not one of the uh, criteria for management of preeclampsia. The delivery route should be planned according to the patient condition and obstetric indication only. Control blood pressure, IV route is preferable in trabartum. Avoid ergot deriv derivatives because it will cause uh, vascular uh, constrictions and increase blood pressure. Good analgesia during labor shorten second stage of labor. Monitor postpartum the blood pressure, especially in the, seven, the first seven days of the uh, delivery. And then monitor during postpartum period. If the blood pressure is starting to be controlled and blood pressure is less than 130 over 80, you gradually uh, decrease the antihypertensive medication dose. Breastfeeding and contraception advice should be discussed with the patient and the plan for the next pregnancy. Uh, if she is chronic hypertension, she has to visit the preconceptional 
a clinic, uh, you have a bridge conceptional clinic or preconceptional visit. So she will stop like if she is taking SE inhibitors and she will adjust her medication, plan her, her pregnancy before to decrease the uh, complications. <clears throat> this is slide to show you when to deliver the patient. If the patient she has eclampsia or health syndrome, this is immediate delivery. No way for conservative management or expected management for those who have already eclampsia and health syndrome. If the patient having gestational hypertension or preeclampsia without severe feature, without severe feature, you can deliver her at 37 weeks. If with severe feature and patient getting her medication and stable maternal and fetal monitoring are Okay, you can prolong the pregnancy to 34 weeks, provide that you give steroids to the patient. Chronic hypertension, if without medication, you can prolong the pregnancy up to 38 weeks. But if with medication, you have to deliver her by 37 weeks. Condition preclude expected management if there is any fetal concern, if uncontrolled, if uh, the mother had uncontrolled blood pressure, she has persistent headache, symptomatic like epigastric pain, visual disturbance, presence of health syndrome, worsening renal function, pulmonary edema, uh, signs or suspected abruption. So you have to uh, deliver the patient. The mode of delivery in women with gestational hypertension or preeclampsia with or without CV features should be determined by routine or aesthetic consideration. Cesarean section is not the management of preeclampsia. You can deliver the patient vaginal individual manner. Regional anesthesia preferred over general anesthesia for uh, preeclamptic patient. If eclampsia occur, the first thing is call for help. Prevent maternal injury. Plas placement in lateral decubitus position, prevention of aspiration, administer of oxygen, monitor vital sign, which is this all the previous what I mentioned, it is a, B, C, D. Magnesium to prevent the occurrence of convulsion, the initial dose you will give. If again convulsion occur, you can give another two to four gram of uh, magnesium sulfate. Deliver after stabilization. Admit to HD or ICU for monitoring. Patient may need head imaging later uh, to see if there is any cerebral hemorrhage. Take home message. Screen for risk factors, low dose aspirin for prevention of preeclampsia from 12 weeks till delivery, appropriate measurement of blood pressure by appropriate equipment, appropriate cuff size, appropriate position of the patient. Repeat, if you are not sure, you could repeat and take the average of the blood pressure. Diagnose correctly and classify which spectrum of hypertension patient has. If not chronic hypertension, no need for low salt diet. Low salt diet only for those who have chronic hypertension. But if the patient is preeclampsia, because the pathophysiology is different in preeclampsia, so the diet has no rule in the control of blood pressure. To start antihypertensive when systolic blood pressure is 150 over 100 or more. Always, always keep the systolic pressure less than 150. Labital oil is the first choice treatment, magnesium sulfate for eclampsia and preeclampsia with severe features. Deliver the patient not so early and not so late. Postpartum management and contraception preconceptional checkup is necessary. This is my reference. And thank you. I am welcome to receive your questions. Yeah, طيب, we're going to receive uh, all questions. Uh, there's so we have a book, a small book, um, Q and A. You can um, just write down there. Um, we're going to answer all questions from there, please. All right, we have a question here about the Arabic language. Um, this course only for um, health participant and and for health uh, careers that's working with us in the uh, in same field and the old boards, we can um, share this knowledge. 
بالنسبه للدوره هذه لان هي تكون بالعربي طبعا الدورات هذه اللي نحن مخصصينها لمستشفى النساء والولاده في المجمع هي طبعا للاستاف اللي موجود ولطلبه البورد اللي موجودين في في المستشفى فنعتذر الموضوع اللغه فاذا في اي استفسارات نحن نستقبل اسئلتكم كلها في البوكس المخصص في الكيو ان اي طيب دكتور الظاهر انه ما في اي اسئله ما شاء الله تب... شكرهم فاهمين ما شاء الله تبارك الله يا دكتور اي هوب ذي اول جيت بنفيت فروم ذيس ان شاء الله اه وي ريسيف ذا فيرست كويشن دقيقه دكتور بس عشان تتوجهي للبوكس المخصص دقيقه شوفي دكتور السؤال موجود عندك الان في البوكس المخصص الكيو اند اي Is high BMI is independent risk factor, risk factor use? Yes, high BMI obesity is associated with increased uh, blood pressure, associated with hypertensive disorder in pregnancy. It is a risk factor. In the past, the risk contraindicated to use thiazide diuretics. No, it is no more uh, contraindicated. We are using thiazide diuretic for those who are chronic hypertension, mostly not as in the preeclampsia. Those who are chronic hypertension, we are used for them diazadic, but it's not absolutely contraindicated. Okay. Any other question? If you saw Tani, if you saw Tani, you saw Tani. What is the criteria for admission for patients with preeclampsia and BIH? Rule of Proteinuria. Proteinuria can help in the diagnosis, but it's not essential, as I mentioned before. If non-proteinuric uh, hypertension, but with severe feature that I mentioned, like thrombocytopenia, liver impairment, renal impairment, any other symptoms. So this is, uh, with, even without proteinuria, this is preeclampsia. Criteria for admission, uh, you can, uh, Follow up the patient in the clinic. If she is stable, control blood pressure antenatally, no severe feature, con um, she is taking her medication. You can bring her in on the clinic and follow up uh, the fetus with ultrasound, Doppler, growth scan every three, two to three weeks, and uh, just to monitor the patient. Admission is only for those who have uh, severe uh, features or they have difficulty to come to the hospital and they have a problem in the follow-up. If the patient is not uh, cooperating, not uh, checking her blood pressure, not coming to the hospital, you can arrange for her. But uh, those who are stable, you, they, you can manage man them in, as OBD case. Which type of contraception is suitable? Okay, uh, for contraceptions, it's better to avoid uh, oral contraception, uh, contraceptive pills, but it not, also it is not absolute contraindication. If mild hypertension, if patient, uh, she can use also oral contraceptive pills. Uh, others are more recommended like IUCD. Uh, it is more preferable type. Sorry, I am asking about aspirin to use to prevent BET with high PMI. Yes, Dr. Hamid, yes, uh, it is uh, one of the risk factors. Obesity is one of the risk factors you can use, but it is not alone. Obesity with other, because it is moderate risk. Moderate risk. So if obesity with other moderate, another moderate risk, you have to give aspirin, low dose aspirin for prevention of preeclampsia. Thank you for all of your questions. Any other one? طيب اوكي دكتور اظن كفايه كده ناخذ الاسئله معنا الاستاذ حامد مدير اداره الشؤون الاكاديميه والتدريب هلا اخوي طارق كيف حالك؟ اهلا وسهلا يا سيدي تفضل ما ترى قلت حامد ما قلت ابو حامد ام سوري ام سوري بس يلا بالتوفيق ان شاء الله شكرا يا دكتوره دكتوره نجوى يا هلا فيك
الله يعطيك الصحة يعطيك والعافية طبعا الدكتورة نجوى هي استشارية أمراض نساء ولادة بمجمع ملك فيصل بالنساء والولادة ما شاء الله هامة من من هامات مجمع ملك فيصل ما شاء الله تبارك الله دائما مبدع معانا في جميع المجالات ان كنا تكلمنا عن المجالات الطبيه وفي مجالات الجوده الله يعطيك الصحه والعافيه دكتوره نجوى الله يعافيك وشكرا لك الله يعطيك العافيه الله يعافيك ويظني ان شاء الله الله يحفظك ان شاء الله هذه شهاده شكر وتقدير نقدمها كشؤون اكاديميه وتدريب نظير لجهودك اللي انت قدمتيها لنا اليوم واتمنى ان شاء الله بالنسبه بالنسبه للحضور انهم استمتعوا في هذه الدوره وما نستغني عن ملاحظاتهم او مقترحاتهم في تحسين الدورات التدريبيه خاصه بمنصه اراده في الشؤون الصحيه باذن الله اخويا طارق تفضل تفضل الله يعطيك العافيه استاذ عمر شكرا دكتوره الله يعطيك الصحه والعافيه ان شاء الله نشوفك ان شاء الله في دورات قريبه باذن الرحمن دكتوره الله يبارك فيك تسلم ان شاء الله جزاكم الله جميعا كل خير الله يبارك فيك طيب بالنسبه لزملائنا اللي كانوا متواجدين معنا اليوم ان شاء الله حيكون معنا الدكتور حامد الطاهر برضو من المجمع بمستشفى النساء والولاده حنا حيتكلم عن حيتكلم عن الجهاز المتكرر باذن الرحمن ممكن هو متاح الان في في المنصه ممكن تسجلوا فيها الان بالنسبه لشهاده الحضور ان شاء الله زملائنا اللي دخلوا من طريق المنصه منصه اراده حيلاقوا شهادتهم بعد انتهاء البث ب 35 دقيقه و30 دقيقه ان شاء الله بالنسبه لزملائنا اللي حضرونا من من خارج المنصه ان شاء الله شهاداتهم توصلهم حيجيهم ايميل في الايميل حيعبوا بياناتهم وفي خ... في اقل من 10 ثواني حيكون الرد جاي من السيستم بيما... بال... بالشهادات باذن الرحمن. آه طبعا نحن عندنا بروتوكول في اداره الشؤون الاكاديميه انه لازم الناس زملائنا او اي احد بيحضر الدورات عندنا لازم يكون نسبه الحضور اكثر من 85%. آه طبعا شركه زوم مؤخرا آه اتاحت لنا انه نحن نعرف الاسماء والايميلات وكذلك الحضور اللي بيحضروا كم دقيقة حضروا فحيستثنوا زملائنا اللي واصلوا شهادة لا يقول أنا ما وصلتني شهادة نحن عرفنا من خلال السيستم إنك أنت ما حضرت معنا 85% سيتم استبعاد زملائنا اللي حضروا أقل من 85% من نسبة المحاضرة إذا عندكم أي استفسارات استفسارات أو اقتراحات فيا ريت تصوروا الشاشة هذه وتواصلوا معنا عن طريق الجوجل فورم اللي موجود عندكم اقتراح انتقاد اي حاجه نحن نرحب فيكم بالنسبه لزملائنا اللي حاضرين من منصه اراده فيا ريت يتوجهوا مباشره على تذاكر الدعم الفني اذا واجهتهم اي مشكله او عندهم اي استفسار فنحن مستعدين نحن نجاوب على اسئلتهم واستفساراتهم باذن الرحمن جميع دوراتنا مسجله في منصه اراده وممكن تحضرها ثاني مره اللي فاتوا الحضور ويصدروا شهاده برضه بالنسبه بالنسبه لقناتنا بالبيو كذلك موجود كل دوراتنا متاحه ومسجله في منصه يوتيوب. الله يعطيكم الصحه والعافيه وبارك الله فيكم وشكرا دكتور اذا عندك اي كلمه بتختمي فيها في المايك عندك تفضلي. جزاك الله خير الله يعطيك العافيه بس شفت هنا في سؤالين بس تفضلي تفضلي دكتور تفضلي خذي راحتك. طيب الله يعطيك العافيه. 